Oh, here's a little surprise. The famous writer Alan Wake just walked in. Folks, I'm gonna see if I can talk him into an interview. Come on in, Mr. Wake. Oh, I'm so glad you could find the time to do this, Mr. Wake. No way to run now, Dan Brown. You back away from me. Don't worry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone calm down. Put the gun down. We're all friends here, right? Cool your jets, Nightingale. We got him. What the hell's the matter with you? There's a civilian in there. What the hell was he thinking? <laughs> I'll get you yet, even if it kills me. You hear me? You hear me, HP Lovecraft? Right, I had I know fallen that off one. so many cliffs, it was ridiculous. That's what you get for naming a book the sudden stop. It was probably good I hadn't had the chance to tell Maine where I was going. I'd have to lose the cops and find my own way to the mine. Hmm. Nightingale stared through the broken studio window into the dark woods. He turned around. Started to walk out, but Maine grabbed his arm. Young man, you almost <clears throat> shot me. You don't shoot off rounds at people like that. What's the matter with you? Nightingale shook his arm free, marched out. His cheeks burned with rage and humiliation. What the hell is wrong with this guy? We don't even get any backstory as to why, like, he's so adamant about Wake being the bad guy. Is there a shotgun around here somewhere? I could use a shotgun. No. Does not look like it. Looks like you can shoot faster when you <coughs> Can't just spam it. Bang, 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 bang. That's how you do it. Which is a pretty cool way to... Um... There was no sensible reason for the power company Ooh. work lights to be here. It was almost as if they'd been left for someone like me to use. The shotgun? Yeah, boy. Ooh, that is a lot of you. Hey, where's the shotgun come from, huh? Get back to this. Turn it on. Woo! That's bad. Whee. Couldn't see him, but I got him anyway. Yeah. Oh. That, uh. That, uh. Giant light definitely helped me. What did this say? In light, you can hurt them. Oh, yeah? Never would have guessed. Where do I go? Yeah, I want to go look up. Yeah, there it is. There's something. I've never picked this one up either. The bulldozer's engine roared to life. Uh, the mud and rocks really? flew as it fought for traction. It crashed the concrete wall and landed heavily in the yard. If it were an animal, it would have shaken its head after the impact, fixed its eyes on me, and charged. 
Of course, it had no head, nor eyes. Shadows crawled on its form, twisting it into a monster. Then, it came for me. A bulldozer. Really? That sucks. Donkey nuts. Not the good kind either, but the big sweaty kind. That's where I just was, wasn't it? Ooh. Sarah trusted her gut, and her gut said Agent Nightingale was an asshole. <laughs> he felt wrong, and it wasn't just the smell of stale booze. It was in the way he flashed his badge, pulled rank, the look in his eyes when he wanted answers. Where was Alan Wake? What was this about an accident? Where was his wife? And most importantly, why did she let Wake go? He wouldn't answer her questions. Federal business was all he'd say. <laughs> That's what you say when you just don't know what to say. <laughs> you don't want to say anything. Oh, more shotgun rounds. Hello? Hello? The most stubborn man I've ever met. Alice? Alice? I'm so afraid. Keeps me in the dark. Please help me. I look at you, Alan, and it's not you. It's something else. Looking out from behind your eyes. Alice, I'm here. I'm so alone here. It's all gonna go to hell. You need to be careful. Cooperate. The connection had been terrible, but that wasn't the only thing that hadn't been right with the call. Yeah, she no seemed wrong shit. somehow, but she had called me. No shit, it was wrong. It wasn't her. Dude, you're being hustled. The pipe wrenched itself loose from the bridge's steel framework. Wrapped in darkness, it floated in midair, twitching. For a moment, I didn't understand what I was looking at. The heavy object lurched at me with impossible force. I threw myself out of the way, but just barely. When I turned my flashlight on it, it shook in a dark rage before it flew at me again. Ah, oh boy. I could see a railway bridge up ahead and a warehouse of some sort on the opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. Got ourselves into some major trouble, boys. We're in a bad spot. <clears throat> Very bad spot. Ooh. Nah, I see. Don't don't try to be sneaky. Oh, you got friends. Okay. Let's see how your friends like that. Yeah. Didn't like it. This is gonna suck, isn't it? Yeah, this is so gonna suck. God, that breathing is creepy. Doesn't sound like him either. Three. The darkness that was pursuing me was growing stronger, and it was taking over everything in its path. Sorry. Oh. I'm blocked in. Ow. What? No. Ah. Ah. 
Woo. I am so low on health. Oh, damn. Oh, there's more. This is where I die. For the first time, this is where I die. Oh, I thought I was going to die. Holy shit. You see how low my health got? Oh, man. And a wheelbarrow. <laughs> oh, I need to blow my nose. Holy shit. Yeah, give me a second. I'm going to find something to blow my nose. <clears throat> Alright. Fuck it hell. That took ages. I slammed the door shut right in his smug face. He pleaded for me to open the door. True to form, the asshole actually thought I would obey. I had no sympathy left. No guilt either. Not for him. I took a moment to savor the scream. I bet I had a smile on my face. It was all that I had time for. The dark presence was inside the lodge with me. Wait, what? What are you going on about? As a teenager, just starting to get interested in writing. Stephen King had been a source of inspiration to me. I thought about all the inanimate objects that had come to life in his books. No one is safe in a good horror story. Certainly not the protagonist. That's what makes them fun. This was anything but. The darkness could possess anything. And it was getting closer. Oh, is this where we fight the bulldozer? I don't want to fight the bulldozer. Oh yeah, it looks like it. Right. No doubt there'll be waves of enemies as well. Almost as if I'm Q. Ow. Shots to the face. To the face. Holy shit. Oh, there's another one. Oh yeah, um, I tried to put this up on Google, uh, Google Ads, I'll tell you the rest of the story in a sec. The darkness surged towards me, sucking everything loose from the ground into its depths, tugging at my clothes. I saw the flare the kidnapper had dropped and threw myself towards it just as I felt my feet leave the ground. The darkness embraced me with the force of a tornado. Somehow I managed to light the flare. The darkness roared and cast me away. I fell toward the dark waters of the lake far below. So, get this. I, um, set up a Google Ads thing for the first part of this series. And... It, it got dropped because apparently this game shot me up to the I can kind of see why it thinks that. Especially with the stupid AIs that reach the gun. Make an 
AI Don't do anything bad. <laughs> so Yeah. I I guess I hate black people now. <laughs> but yeah, you know. Uh, I'm just gonna take it down really soon. Ooh. Oh, come on. Open. Uh, what's that? Flares. Don't need anything else. When am I going to get an upgrade? And by upgrade, I mean a flashlight upgrade. Because I need one. It'd be good to get one. never been this glad to see the sunrise. I had a couple of hours to get to the coal mine. The coal mine wasn't far now. Sounded like there was supposed to be a song there. Today, but, uh, I would meet the kidnapper, it. and he would <laughs> give me Alice. I wouldn't give him any other choice. A drowning man will clutch at a straw. Little by little, without realizing it, I'd come to believe that the story in the manuscript was coming true. The current of its narrative had taken me deeper and deeper into dark waters. Alice had been taken from me. Barry was probably in jail. I was a fugitive from the FBI. The whole world taken over by the Dark Presence was trying to destroy me. It all felt real, but it matched a textbook case of insanity. I don't see how. Oh, this road is bumpy. God, this camera is shocking. Was actually the way to go or not, but you know. I had to look around. Right? This is Pat Main, and you're listening to KBF FM. Folks, I want to apologize for kind of abandoning you to that looping music track last night, but I was detained. You see, I encountered a big shot G-man with an itchy trigger finger who could use a, a lesson in manners and a boot in the ass. Not necessarily in that order either. <laughs> now, folks, I know I'm not being very informative here, and I apologize for that. I really should just keep quiet, but I'm just so peeved right now. Because some people just shouldn't be carrying badges. And I'm just glad that our Sheriff Breaker was there to straighten things out. And if someone I met last night is listening, let me just say... I'm sorry if my mouth got you in trouble. I'm pretty sure you're not the bad guy here. Godspeed, son. <laughs> I hope you know what you're doing. Now, on a lighter note, I'll be talking to Dr. Nelson all morning. But first, a little music. That's awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. Wait, I'm just going to check to see if there are any copyright claims on my last videos. Because... Uh, yeah, I haven't, um, I haven't checked that. Let's have a look, yeah? Okay. Um... No. No, that's good. Thank God for that. I'm doing something right at least. Wait, where's my car?
<laughs> Why is the road so bouncy? God, this camera. That's a car. That's a car right there. Mm, look at that. Oh. All time favorite cars is, uh, car, should I say, is the 69 Dodge Charger. That has to Welcome be my favorite. Welcome back to KBF FM. Hope you enjoyed that tune. Now, Doc, you were talking about life and finding that special someone, that soulmate. Well, you were talking about that. I was saying I don't buy it. Well, see, mm. to me, that's strange, because I always pegged you as a hopeless romantic. <laughs> you got me there, Pat. But I think love's where you look for it. And you need to do a lot of looking, sure. But the idea that there's that one special person out there for you, and if you miss that chance, it's gone forever, and you're forever incomplete. I mean... Isn't that depressing? Or hmm. heck, childish even? Hey, there's plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> and apparently a fisherman has a fishing analogy for everything. <laughs> what you're saying, isn't that a little harsh? Well, no. What I am saying is that your potential for finding that connection isn't limited to what's essentially a chance encounter. How is that harsh? Yeah, well, I guess that's a nice thought, but let me say something personal here. Okay. Now, well, I, I don't disagree with you exactly but I can't really fit that together with what I feel what I what I felt for someone because she was the one she was and she I let her drift away from me maybe I didn't put in the work I don't know but well since then and it, it was a long time ago but but since then there hasn't been anyone not like her and I'm not saying I dwell on her or haven't moved on I like my life I not living in the past, but I do miss the way she completed me. You can't argue with the heart, Pat. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. I had kind of a scary experience last night, and let's just say it's shaken a few things loose. Oh, good price of... I completely agree with that, eh? <clears throat> if you find someone, you find someone. You can't really fight it. You can't limit yourself to one one thing that you're looking for. I'm not saying that you can't limit not I'm not saying go out there and date a bunch of women, but women or men, who knows? It's completely up to you, but you know it is kind of depressing. When you think about it in that way. Is this where I'm supposed to go? Why are you stopping? <laughs> Oi! Vermont. Spying on the writer on the ferry had been a disappointment. His boss had made Wake Out to be something special. But Maude hadn't been impressed. He'd gotten a good long look up the wife though, and he liked what he saw. Mott had fantasized about goading Wake into a fight, but it hadn't happened. Still, he'd get his chance to see if the writer had anything in him. He'd been promised as much. So that's what I mean. There's like no backstory as to who who his boss is. And And all that kind of stuff. If they had added just a little bit of that kind of storytelling. Yeah, Tokyo Drift. Yeah. And. It was early. I was supposed to meet the kidnapper at noon in the main building. <clears throat> the coal mine was quiet. It was a museum now. Yeah, it is. Jesus. Wait. Got something here. 
With Nightingale gone and the night wind blowing in through the broken studio window, Maine stared at Sarah. The sheriff looked away. Maine's voice shook with barely controlled anger. That boy's doing more drinking than thinking. I hope you know what you're doing, Sarah. He's got a sickness in his eyes. You take my word for it. He wants Wake for a reason, and it's not for anything good. <coughs> Wait, let me read that. Uh, I'll read that later. No, don't skip. Oh, that was close. I didn't want to go outside. Cops had to be looking for me. The new sun turned the place into a sauna. The day dragged on. Different scenarios ran through my mind. Ways of how I'd torture the kidnapper to get Alice back. Or the different horrible things he could have done to her. I imagined her dead. I had no way of knowing she was still alive. It was killing me. I was running on blind hope. It was all a waste of time. The bastard never showed up. Dickhead. Wake! Where the hell are you? Change of plans. You know where Mirror Peak is? It's a big mountain north of where you are. You follow the path from the mine, you can't miss it. There's a lookout point there. I'll be waiting. I'm through being jerked around you by you. You want to see your wife alive? Because if you do, you better watch what you say to me. Do we understand each other? I want to talk to Alice. Yeah, and I want the manuscript. Don't keep me waiting, Wake. Hello? Hello? Ah! I'm going to kill him. Don't worry, you got a shotgun. <clears throat> I had to get Just to Mirror fire. Peak. Holy... Shit! 